Good evening and welcome to Big Budget Business, where we highlight the lives of prolific young individuals making strides in their respective fields. Now, starting and sustaining a business without any type of funding can be a huge challenge. <clears throat> so today, we'll be speaking to somebody who has successfully overcome this business challenge. Mr. Foster Manyapelo is the founder of TRM Group Safety. Mr. Manyapelo, it's a pleasure having you here, sir. Thank you, my brother. Pleasure to be here. Welcome. So maybe let's start with your background. Yes. Who is Foster and what is his backstory? All right. Uh, Foster Manyapelo, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I would say that uh, I grew up um, in Gabs for the most part. Uh, you know, I'd say that uh, our family, you know, I was really, I'm, a, I'm a mama's boy. <laughs> I was raised by my mother and my, my dad. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, I know our background, I would say, what it was full of emotion, I think, financial um, turmoil. Okay. You know, a lot of struggles. Okay. So, uh, you know, we'd find ourselves in a little area. But I, I, I feel it's a blessing in disguise because I think that's what led me to take the path that I've taken today. Okay. You know, trying to pursue um, entrepreneurship and, you know, financial freedom. So, yes, I'd say what a, that background did and what, you know, we're having financial struggles, okay. witnessing tremendous debt yes. uh, well, I think on a lot it really awakened that other side of me and realizing that you know what uh, I really need to do something to help the family yes yes so yeah that's pretty much it oh that's great and then in terms of school your gaps are bringing and the like oh. um uh, I went to St. Mary's Primary School. Oh, great and then I get like it's an SSKM all right and then I get in my lady Okay. Senior secondary, and then uh, I then went on to uh, Lemco Queen. Oh, great. Uh, Lemco great. Queen, um, <laughs> I actually got an associate degree in fashion design. Oh, <laughs> I, I, think, I think we can tell. <laughs> we can tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then um, Look good. <laughs> after that, I, 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 I pursued a bachelor's degree in professional design. Okay, yes. okay, that's yes. great. No, oh, that's an interesting backstory, and I think a lot of people can relate with respect to it. Um, an upgr uh, upbringing yes. where there's a bit of turmoil, a bit of debt there, so yeah. that shapes how we become as life grows, yes. as life goes on. Um, now let's get into Mr. Manyapelo, the entrepreneur. Yes. How did the snack for business start? How did you get to the current stage that you're at? Okay. Well, my my my, my business uh, journey started off. You know, I, I've always been into business when I come to think about it. My very, very first business was in primary school. Uh, what, what, what we do, it was just when the internet first started. Okay. okay. Um, there was this website where you download lyrics. Oh, yes. Yeah, so what I would do is that I would ask my mother to download the s s popular lyrics for songs. Okay. Like boy M and M and whatnot, oh, yes. she download that for me and print it out, and then I'd sell it to to my fellow students, like fifty tablets per page or something like that. So uh, that was my first real real business, like my first introduction. Um, yeah, so you find that um, during the, the the hardship, financial hardships, you know, I'd always have a small money box, saving money. Whenever my my parents would be struggling, maybe they need transport money. Yes. I'll bail them out. So I've only oh, just been great. that kid who always... <clears throat> that's when I first learned how to save <clears throat> and stuff <clears throat> like that. <clears throat> yeah, so during my, 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 my business career, then uh, started again at around age 16. You know, when uh, hey, things were really tough. Uh, you know, there's, there's no income. Yeah. Right. So that's when my aunt tell her, you know, I've always then talking about starting a clothing brand. Then about that, it's like over 500 day. Or like a whole similar thing and help help out Kolapi. You'll be able to help out Kolapi. Um, I got the, the 500 bucks. I was able to print uh, how many? Five t-shirts. Okay. Uh, later, the first time I had to launch my clothing brand, I could have 85 clothing. The first I, time I, I recall, I can recall that brand because yes. it was big, varsity yes. times. I yes. 
yes. so so it, it started off kona lady not sense of kona lady yeah hey, the beginning was uh, it was very unpleasant mm. uh, it was at a fashion show uh, end of term fashion show uh one of the many popular brands at the time uh this is getting a lot of mileage already yes. Yes. so now i'm um, good at 35 years and is about to get introduced to to the school and backstage yeah, no, no one knows this brand i'm having a hard time getting people to model the clothes but i but i'm going to come around that period they agreed to <laughs> to wear the clothes uh the, then the, i had to come on stage and i guess this is the part where you are introduced already this is the founder yes hey my brother i i, I went out there kore ke ke le receipt book nyana ile ke tso re ke a go rekisa go mpe kore on stage my brother and i got boot are you serious people throwing papers hey wow um, what an experience yeah and then from there um hey, it broke my heart and my self esteem mm. i stayed i think after that that i didn't want to sell kurati to ever stay there yeah kasa 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 eriki so cuz era no ba thone ba nyatsa ba in the 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 showcasing like 20 t-shirts yes. and i get like a fire thing and go rap before i was called on stage no one or okay let's get a dingle t-shirt from one of the models what up so i want yeah hey my brother can i can a year without selling that they really broke me that they I cried that night that I, that I really gave up on the idea of ever being in business. Alan. But then along my aunt kept pushing her I was a bit see holo I was a bit see my dear. Oh yes, there's so, the pressure. Yeah. That's when along um I I I I decided to you know what, let me just try this thing again. Started pushing to rap the uh you know uh Wow. <laughs> yeah, I started pushing uh, the the, yeah, the clothing brand. Eventually I was able to go to basically I just used those five t-shirts like I still kept them because no one bought them. <laughs> so but luckily I kept on I'm, I've always been good with um, money like handling money. Okay. So those five t-shirts I kept flipping from 5 to 10, <laughs> 15 to 20 just like yes. I didn't I do get there. Till eventually um I tried to look for stores to stock the the the, the clothing brand initially they rejected me mm. but uh that's when I I I then decided you know what let me go set up a store go me mall okay so I just bought a gazebo I guess set up a store look thing go so I I always I, it's a strategy I still use today I call it taking it to the streets go yes. right if if in the in the boardroom or the corporate world they're shutting out the best thing is to take it to the streets take and make it, it hot mm. that's how guys like bo oskido became successful of course and bo jz when record labels were shutting doors in their faces they took it to the streets they did their own thing yeah yeah so i took it to the streets for some time um then eventually i started gaining some traction uh i started getting featured in newspapers wow. uh you know that's when the stores started taking notice mm. i was able to get a store to distribute for me uh, i was i was selling from from a store called uh, uh <laughs> vision ot and in, okay. in, in riverwalk okay. they gave me they, they they stocked my stuff and also uh, another store i forgot the name doesn't mean mall and bbs oh great they stocked for great. me and then also uh, another store in my fikeng Yes. Yes, my fitting also showed love. You're already international. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh from then with the clothing brand I founded a um a, a multi-gender football team. Okay. That has men and women. Yes. Just basically just trying to um um advocate for uh, gender equality. That's great. Yeah, so we did that. Um yeah, and uh you know through Kurap 85 clothing I was able to found some some of Botswana's most prolific fashion figures currently. Oh great. Uh, for my fashion shoot I I discovered the the amazing talents of Latisha Gaboy of oh. X models. Okay. And also uh King for Empire. Mm. Oh yes. Actually yes. The, 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 it, it actually started from just one photo shoot. Oh, it's a, great. it's a crazy thing. Mm. Yeah, and then from then on you know I've always believed I I love something that Oskido says. He says mm. He was asked you put a lot of people on and you are afraid that at some point they'll surpass you then he says no 
by helping out fresh talent, yes. it keeps me relevant myself. Oh. I wanna, Double HQ wow. once said it when they're talking about him putting on uh, Casper. Mm -hmm. But I kind of know when you have a light, a, a candle, if I light your candle, it doesn't take anything away from mine. Yeah. yeah, and you Great. know, from I like that, from uh, from founding, like um, discovering Bo Latisha like, Boy and uh, and Bo King, we also collaborated. Yes. There were times when their brands eventually blew up, and you know they would engage me, and then I would add some more mileage Which on what I'm doing. Collaboration is key. Yeah, so uh, I think. Uh, as far as the clothing brand is concerned, I think those were some of my happiest being able to, you know, found, discover hidden talents in yeah. people. Yeah, in, even in boxing, I remember there's, there's, a, there's a gentleman, he's a boxer right now. Uh, his, his, his boxing name is Kurapt <laughs> Ramabol. Oh, okay. yeah, he's one of the champions for Botswana. So, oh, that's great. And I actually introduced him to boxing. Oh, wow, <laughs> and, that's great. Yeah, so uh, that's, a, that's another thing that I'm proud of. And also, there's also another clothing brand from from uh, Mochudi. It's called Pedigree Sport. Mm. Yeah, so it's just another young gentleman at the time. He just approached me, mm. told me, you know what, I'm really inspired by your work. I want to start something. And, you know, I shared everything and gave him all my contacts. And I really wish that black people in Botswana we could put each other on because mm. it really doesn't take anything away from you. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Uh, what I picked up from your story there is that first, the booing, and how emotionally it affected you. Yes. But then after some time, you decided, let me get back up. Yes. So as entrepreneurs, we need to be resilient. The challenges will be there, but we need to get up and go back into that boxing ring and fight for what we want. Because it was after you got back into the ring, started fighting, and you took things to the streets that you were able to collaborate with others, discover others, and help others out. Because what we do tends to be beyond just us as individuals. Whether consciously or unconsciously, you'll find that you've affected someone with that business that you are getting into. Yeah. Thanks for that. And then fast forward to today, tell us about uh, maybe TRM Group, okay. TRM Group Safety. What are the businesses under that? And what are the products and services that you offer? Okay. Yeah, so fast forward to, um, oh, there's something I really want to touch no on. No problem. <laughs> Uh, there's this book I've been reading. I think it's one of the best books uh, I've read in my life. <laughs> it's, it's by 50 Cent. Oh, uh, it's yes. called Hustle Smart, Hustle Harder. Nice. Uh, he was talking about a time when he is, co he, the chapter is called uh, Seeing the, 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 the Writing on the Wall. Mm. He was talking about a time when his uh, record sales started going down. Mm. And then mm. he realized, mm. you know what, I need to make a, a continuation of my career. Yes. Mm -hmm. switch up uh, oh, when yes. I say, I'm going to get wiped out in of the course. music industry. Become obsolete. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, Linna, the, the clothing brand, uh, fashion is one of the most um, volatile industries you could be in. So, uh, I, I am proud. I did have a lot of long longevity from it. Um, but there came a point when I had to see the writing on the wall. That, well, you know what? Um, I need to transition into something else. Yes. Wow. Mm. Uh, I'm going to get wiped out because this is an industry that you trend. Wow. Mm. So, it came a time when I was still putting out great stuff, but then it wasn't selling like it mm. used to. Mm. That's when I, I then transitioned into graphic design. Okay. So, um, I became a full time graphic designer. Uh, you know, uh, I, I worked on some of the biggest brands in Botswana. Okay. Uh, but one of the closest ones to my heart uh, would be a, a furniture store called About Beds. Because mm. started, it started off just one store, but eventually it was able to really dominate the fa furniture industry. Uh, you know, getting into South Africa and different wow. markets. So by then I was doing fashion design. That's when I rented out an office in Commerce Park. Mm -hmm. So at the time, um, you know, I, the, one of the things that led to the gradual decline of the clothing brand was that I told you about um, how things were tough with my family. Uh, my family was struggling financially. So one thing I did is that I, I, I would always try to help out with money. But then 
it got to a point where by the financial load eventually crumbled the clothing business. I got depressed for some time because I had lost almost everything. But then I, I got a lesson from that. Uh, it's best to teach people how to fish and not get fish. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that's when now, when I was renting out uh, the office at Commerce Park, I, I, I then decided, you know what, I want to empower my family. Yes. Because Rick Ross once said something about, you know, it, it, it makes no sense to be rich while everybody's broke around you. Because mm. eventually they're going to crumble you down. Mm. Mm. So that's when I just got on, on to a pursuit of empowering my family. Oh, that's great. So that's when I, my mother had always um, uh, been into real estate. She studied real estate. Uh, but then at the time, the company that she was working for was, was going under. <coughs> so that's when I said, you know what, come work, uh, come work with me at the office. Uh, I'll, I'll help you start this business. We'll yes. be partners in it. I'll, 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 I'll do the brand and everything. That's how Newark Properties was born. Wow. Yeah, so then we started Newark Properties, and I'm really proud. Newark Properties is one of the fastest growing uh, real estate companies in the country. It certainly is. As, yeah. And it, 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 it's actually influenced a lot of um, how people market property currently. Because <coughs> we, we made it popular to, you know, to advertise properties with a template. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yes, I, I do take my bragging rights for it. I've, I've, ever since then, <coughs> we have seen a lot of uh, real estate companies also adopt that. Yes. So I pride myself in being the originator of that. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yes. That's great. Yeah, so um, while Newark Properties started to gain traction, uh, my, my sister was uh, struggling within uh, her career for of, uh, occupational health and safety. Uh, that's when I did the same thing with my mother. I said, you know what, um, come let's start a, a brand within occupational health and safety. Wow. Uh, this will be the first brand ever and it's going to be the most popular one in Botswana. That's how TRM Group Safety Wow. Uh, was born. Mm -hmm. uh, TRM Group stands for the Real Manyape Loco. The Real Manyape Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. So that's when we started TRM Group Safety. Uh, TRM Group Safety is one of the most um, easily identifiable and recognized brands within the occupational health and safety space in yes. Botswana. Um, we currently offer Nebosch online courses. Okay. Yes, uh, and we also do um, trainings and audits like your ISO certifications. Okay. Yeah, so we do trainings like your uh, first aid, firefighting, you know, she rap, <coughs> you know, and the like. So uh, TRM Group, um, you know, what it does is that, you know, it gives uh, but young Botswana within OH, the OHS space, like uh, a really good uh, opportunity to get uh, job opportunities because the mm -hmm. qualifications are so superior. Yes. So you find that, you know, whenever people have that qualification, they become so highly sought after, you yes. know, because mines and, and those t and construction uh, companies always prefer a Nebosch qualification. Oh, so okay. Botswana. So TRM Group prides itself in being the number one providers of Nebosch online courses. Wow. So uh, Nebosch, uh, look at Nebosch. <laughs> TRM Group uh, currently is the local partner for Electro Mining Botswana. Oh, okay. Yeah, Electro Mining Botswana is the Botswana's leading um, mining expo. Uh, okay. There's also an expo in South Africa. It's called Electro Mining Africa. Now oh, that's great. that's the biggest one in the whole continent. Oh. So we are handling the Botswana one. So electro mining uh, is usually held at fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, the last one was in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, we're set to have another electro mining uh, Botswana this year, September the 22nd. Oh, but great. due to COVID-19, yeah. uh, it's still hanging in the balance right now. So electro mining, um, the one that we organized for 2019, you know, was supported by various um, ministries. <coughs> yeah, your, Ministry of Health, yes, Ministry so, of uh, Finance, you know, a lot of a lot of ministries. We partnered up also with the Botswana Chamber of Mines. Mm. Yes, uh, we we held some free to attend seminars. Mm -hmm. You know, those seminars we invited 
uh, executives from mines. Okay. Like um, various mines in Botswana where they gave, you know, talks on the current developments within mines. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, just discussing various opportunities that are there in terms of employment mm -hmm. and also business mm -hmm. for black Botswana. Yes. So, you know, we had a lot of... Uh, hopefuls there at the at, at the seminar soaking up all this information finding out ways in which they can get involved in the mining industry um it was also it, we it was a partnership between uh, ourselves uh Botswana chamber of mines and uh, uh vivo energy mm. yes yes uh electro mining is sponsored by bbf safety group and mauto tech mm. yes mm. uh uh we're proud to uh that it, it actually won an award. Congratulations! Uh, yes, Congratulations. Uh, in, in South Africa, uh, it was the the the, the exhibition awards yes. that that covers the whole of Africa, like uh, exhibitions throughout Africa. So, wow. electro mining was able to win uh, uh, a distinction in marketing. Wonderful, and also the best overall. Um, um, in terms of logistics, the, the mm -hmm. best overall Africa-bound exhibition for wow. 2019. Oh, so, um, yeah, so electro mining is, uh, is, is something that we're really proud about at TRM Group. Uh, you know, it also um, um, contributes uh, within the region of 8 million to the general economy of the country. That is a substantial amount. Yes. Substantial. Yeah, so those figures, you know, the, 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 that amount of money comes through, you know, hotels, you know, because we have a lot of people coming Cutting from outside in. the yeah. country. Certainly. We have a lot of machinery coming in, mm. you know, um, uh, branding companies, logistics yeah. companies. Mm. So it's really heartbreaking to think about the opportunities lost if we are not able to do it this year. Mm. But uh, nonetheless, we're keeping our fingers crossed if we can do it this year or we'll do it in 2022. Electro mining. I'm, I'm definitely rooting for you to have it because I mentioned, I heard you mention something about how young Botswana can get into mining. So I'm sure a lot of people at home are interested in seeing just how they can get their foot through that door. And so we'll all be praying for you definitely. that it all uh, takes place. And you know, you, you said something very interesting there how you turned a problem into a solution. And it started at home. A lot of the things we do as entrepreneurs usually tend need to have, you know, a deeper meaning behind them. Firstly, you said your mom yeah. was facing trouble with her work and you said, come, come through, let's push together. Yeah. Secondly, your sister, yeah. she had the same thing. So you kept it within the family and said, no, come here, let's do this together. And yeah. now look what it's become. Yeah. So usually the problems that we face, whether at home or within our lives, let's see how we can convert these into something that can be fruitful and beneficial for everyone around us. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So it's very interesting what you're doing. And I see you're dabbling in a lot of things. How do you handle it? Um, you remind me of a question that was once asked to TD Jakes. <clears throat> they, they asked them, you, you do talk shows, you preach, you're an author. <clears throat> How do you do all of that? <clears throat> and then he answered that um, the thing about uh, me is that all my activities, they, they're centered around one key talent. Wow. which is communication. Wonderful. Yeah. So Wonderful. to you, it seems like I'm doing seven things, mm. but mm. to me, it's just one. Oh, great. So I go and I great. communicate over there. I communicate on my yes. book. I communicate while preaching. Oh, wow. So the same thing uh, is with me. Uh, with all these companies, I'm just doing the same thing for different, in just in different industries. <clears throat> you know, so it does, because the last thing you want is to um, divide your strength. Oh. Yes. So what I do is that get diluted. my my common uh, skill is really brand development and and and, and business strategy. <coughs> so I I do that at Newark Properties. And then I do that with Tiara. Tiara. So I'm doing the same thing in different spaces. Oh, wonderful! Yes, and the other thing is that I don't work alone. Oh yes. Uh, you find that uh, with things like uh, Newark Properties, you find that my mother is the one that actually spearheads the whole thing. Okay. I, I'm just usually in the in the behind the scenes, yes. just making sure that things are as they are supposed to be. <coughs> you know. So yeah, that that's that's really it. Um, I'm not a fan of being a jack of all trades. It's not a good idea because you're you're just splitting your strength. <coughs> so the best thing way, way to go about it 
is just find one common skill yes. and then you apply it in different areas. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's great. So let's see what it is that we may be good at and see how we can harness that particular talent or skill to see how it can become profitable for us. Um, now, there's this issue. You seem to have been doing all of this without business funding. A lot of people locally will say, ah, you know, I'm really trying to do this, but I need funding. I'm trying to get this done, but I need funding. And the only time that you've mentioned funding right now <laughs> is that 500 pula years That's ago. That's it. And all of this other stuff to the point where your endeavors are contributing about 8 million to the economy. At which point have you sought funding? <laughs> Never. <laughs> wow. Tell us about that. Yeah, so, um, well, first things first, you know, I, I really wish we could really break this mentality of needing funding. Mm, no, um, okay. I, I, have, I, I have tried to apply for youth funds, mm -hmm. but unfortunately my proposal got rejected. It really broke my heart. And, sure. you know, the, the sad thing is that sometimes you won't get funding, but you'd see other people getting funded, and it's not necessarily people that actually know what they're doing in business. <laughs> I but you know, know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, but, but 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 at the same time, it was a blessing because mm. I I think if I could choose, I'd choose it doing it this way, mm. you know, because um because of my childhood upbringing, you know, it's made me really afraid of debt. Mm. So yeah, I, I, I can't owe anyone anything. So that's why I like to f put up my own money and fund my own things. Mm. So um, you know, what I would say is that. If you are looking for funding, stop waiting for funding. You'll, you'll wait forever. Mm. Uh, the whole funding thing, you know, because when, because funding, it's like uh, funding is like taking the elevator, but the, but you, when you should actually take the stairs, because mm. there are lessons on the stairs. Yeah, like and that. you know, it's uh, not having funding has made me more resourceful wow. than the average uh, entrepreneur. It's taught me how to leverage. Wonderful. Yes, yeah, so you find that, like even with my, at my office block, there are so many people who've come there having gotten funded, and after a year or two, the company's down. And you find that me, the person who never got funding, I'm still around, you know, and people will end up saying, well, they, they look at me like I'm the one who got funding when I'm the one who didn't. Because it's really taught me how to be resilient and know how to keep things going. You find that I'm in a space whereby even if a, a business doesn't have uh, income for three months, I know how to run a business with no money. Wow. And I know how to run a business with money. Sustainable operations. Yeah. So the problem with most people is that they don't know how to do business without money. You know, so you find that they're not going to be resourceful in how they leverage things. Mm. So some of the things that you leverage are, are things like relationships. Like for example, Newark Properties when we started it, there was no money. There was there wasn't even no money just to even register the company. Wow! But because of good relationships and leveraging relationships, um, I'm in a position whereby. I always like to be on an honorable person. Yes, and that's important yes. in business. Everyone that deals with me knows that this guy's gonna pay you. Mm. Like, in fact, I'll be the one following you to, to, to give constantly you your remind you, I'm gonna pay you, mm. keeping you up to date. So, yes. you find that when you do such a thing, um, it creates your name becomes golden. So that people. There are, there are people who are always willing to do favors for me just on my name alone. Wow, yes. now that's good. You've built a good reputation for yes. yourself. When they say your reputation precedes you, it should definitely be a good one. Yeah, so wow. that's how I was able to register Newark. I, I registered Newark properties with no money, but I just told the company secretary, hey, I need you to do me a solid. Register this company, I'll pay you later. They never have an issue. Wow. So that's how, so when you don't have funding, it teaches you these things of how to be um, many leverage. You need to mm. leverage your relationships. Mm. So you find that if ever I was to go five months with no income, I can still be able to run things properly mm. just of the number of good relationships that I have wow. with people in my network. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I can see that this funding aspect, this not having funding, has built a bit of skills where 
your your business and self are concerned now yeah. let's get more to the self part what would you say are the characteristics or traits needed for not a bit budget to personally what should i have to be able to survive this without funding stage because trust me it gets tough but yes. what are those characteristics that i need to have mm. <laughs> Wow, I, there's so many angles that I would love to uh, dissect that one. But, um, you know, what I would say um, is that, you know, you should never be afraid to, to start small. Yes. Whatever that you have to mm. fight with, mm. fight with that. Wow. If you have five bullets to your name, mm. find a way to fight with your five bullets oh, and great. make the most out of it. Um, you know, because, um, you know, and, and, and really, I would say, wow, okay. <laughs> All right. So um, I would say that you need to believe in yourself. Oh, certainly. Because mm. you find that uh, at the time when I was doing the clothing brand or when I started Newark Properties, we were so broke. And I remember my mother would always be saying, hey, can I just look at all the, the market is saturated. Mm -hmm. Look at all these big uh, companies within real estate. And, Hey, I would get so angry, say, I don't care, don't even mention any of them. Yes. I don't care. Mm, I in, know. Uh, in fact, mm. those people should be worried that I'm getting into this market because I'm going to eat them alive. That is the attitude. Whatever I get. So yes. my belief is in myself and not money. Yes. As long as I have me, that's all I need. That is very inspiring. Yeah. So, you know, um, that's when we started getting into it, started being um, consistent, mm. uh, you know, being dedicated and committed, you, you never stop. Wow. Yeah, so, you, and you find that whichever time that we get, we get you know, we, we really give them our best mm. to the point whereby they are willing to support us, not because uh, push your IBW, but support the local. Wow. They are just supporting yes. us because we are just that good. That's what it should be yeah. about, so, not just, yeah. no one's giving anyone any favors. Yes, yes. It's all about the work mm. that you put in. Yeah. So, so I, I pride myself that we don't get supported because we're a local company or about so I'm not supported because of that. Exactly, so and you can good. say it proudly. Yes. We are just that good. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. So, so that's how we really um, get a, a market share, mm. you know, and and, and, and really marketing it to the best of our ability, mm. finding a different and better way to, 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 to do things. Perfectly. Yeah. Wow. I really got some stuff there. Belief in ourselves mm, is important. Mine. Leveraging on relationships, yeah. ensuring that your reputation is solid yeah. and stellar. And you can only do that by being an honorable person. Exactly. Yeah, no, got that to tell the truth. Just to be honest, mm. but honestly, Bajwana, a lot of us are not honorable people. And I'm sorry to say this, but usually I find myself sometimes um, preferring not to do business with our own people mm. because people are not honorable, honestly. You get into an engagement with them and they don't, they yes. renege on their promises. Yes. They don't do their part. Yes, mm. but then it also creates opportunities for some of us who are honorable people. Yes. Yeah, so. But that's, that's where we find ourselves, though, and it breaks my heart, though. Mm. So, I know, I know, these people who have funding, let's say you get funde, funding, mm. and <laughs> because happy quarter, the way we do business cutting, we burn a lot of bridges. Oh, yes. That's one thing I do. I, I never burn bridges, no matter never what. Never burn bridges. Because mm. mm. the road is still long. You're still going to need people. So, that, so you find that everybody that I've worked with, imparted ways on a, on a good note. Amicably. So, uh, if mm. ever I have a situation and I can come back, I can always come back to say, hey, um, maybe let's say it's, like it's, it's a computer supplier. Yeah. Let's say I got robbed at the office. Mm. I can always say, okay, I need uh, maybe five computers. And because of our past working relationship, yes. you can always say, mm. this guy is good for it. He'll, he'll pay up. Wonderful. And then now, because if you're almost running your burning pages, you don't have the liberty to do that. Mm. If there's no cash flow in your business, you can't go to anyone and worry, uh, please help me out, because why you burnt bridges? Mm. But how I didn't lay my you didn't pay it back. Yes. Uh, yeah. So people, people most times, whenever I do this, whenever you know I'm paying people back on time and doing what I said I would do, they always look at me and think, wow, they think I'm doing it for them, but then honestly, it's, it's for me. Perfect. It's, it's for myself, because mm. 
it's just for my own principle. Mm. You know, I do it for me. You're just a beneficiary of that, of that wow. principle. Wow. wow. No, I love that standpoint. Yeah. All right. Uh, so tell us about yourself as an individual outside of, you know, um, the business. Is there anything okay. community development or societal that you engaged in? And then just after that, how can we reach you for your services? Okay. Um, currently, I, I, I serve as the president of uh, Harboni Breakfast Toastmasters. Oh, great. Uh, so Toastmasters is basically a non-profit organization that uh, helps cultivate people's uh, communication, public speaking, and leadership skills. Great. Yeah, so Great. We, we have our meetings uh, every first Saturday and third Saturday of a month. OK. Yeah, so that's what we're currently doing. Um, I'm, I'm also the, the, the current uh, international speech champion at, for, for the club and area. Congratulations. Yes, yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> uh, and then I, I am also uh, currently the vice chairman mm -hmm. for Roundtable Botswana. Oh, okay. Roundtable Botswana is basically um, an organ a non-profit organization. You know, it's just a, um, a group of young gentlemen uh, within the young professional men yes. who just come together and do charitable um, deeds within yes. the community. Wonderful. Some of the um, organizations that um, we support are your, your Chavla in Botswana. Mm -hmm. We make monthly donations to that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're currently also um, supporting an initiative by uh, Lady Circle Botswana. That's the female version of Round Table Botswana. Oh, okay. Young ladies. ladies Circle. Yeah. Okay. The professional ladies that are also doing charitable works. Mm -hmm. They're currently building a, um, a rehabilitation center in Block 8. Oh, great. That's dedicated to um, um, uh, um, housing um, young children with cancer. Oh. So currently we're, we're supporting them and raising funds for that. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, th th those are the activities that I get up to outside of uh, business. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, and then um, well, uh, and where, where I can be reached is basically on social media, Facebook. Uh, okay. It's Foster. I have a page called Foster Manyapelo. Okay. Then I have a personal profile, Foster R Manyapelo. Foster R Manyapelo. Yes. Okay. And then uh, you can also follow the various pages of the organizations mm -hmm. that I, I, I deal with. Uh, you can follow Newark Properties and TRM Group Safety. Okay. And all social media platforms, you have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also the organizations that I deal with outside of business, they can also be found on those platforms. Oh, wonderful. Mr. Foster, Manya Pelo, it's been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you for the invite, my brother. Right, so today's two-minute tip. I was recently honored with an invitation to address a congregation on the issue of financial wellness. We all know that spiritual wellness is important, health is important, but financial wellness is also crucial for us to have a wholesome living experience. And as the conversation went on, we discovered that the foundation or basic premise for our financial wellness is basically our money mentality. What are the attitudes and beliefs that you hold with respect to money? This can shape your financial standpoint. So what we did, we sat down and we wrote down things that shaped or programmed us when we were younger with respect to how we see money. Things like money is hard to come by. Money doesn't fall from the sky. Money doesn't grow on trees. Some of these things can shape the way we think about money. So you might want to do this for yourself and see what it is that may be shaping your current perspective of money. Now, remember that your most prevalent thoughts and beliefs where money is concerned can shape your financial standing. Once again, your most prevalent thoughts and beliefs where money is concerned can shape your financial standing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a wonderful show. Thank you very much for your time. From me, Big Budget, and the team, it's good night and God bless. And never forget that you were born for so much more.